You know, it's been a tough few weeks. I guess it's been a tough few months. Everyone's kind of down on account of the pandemic and the riots and the arson and, and the chaos and the mayhem. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to take a look back on some of the great moments from the most entertaining president of the United States that we've ever had. Okay, question? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. She's shocked that I picked her. No. It's like in a state of shock. I'm not thinking, Mr. That's President. That's okay. I know you're not thinking. You never do. I'm sorry? No, go ahead. You've called women you don't like fat pigs, dogs, slobs, and disgusting animals. Your Twitter account Only is Rosie several- O'Donnell. This moment, this is actually my favorite Trump moment, period, ever. I think this is the moment when... He went from the sort of funny side candidate that everyone was getting a kick out of to this guy is going to be the president of the United States <laughs> is when he took this, you know, total brutal question on him right at the top of the debate. You've said all these horrible things about women. He did say terrible things about women and he takes it and he flips it. She goes, only Rosie O'Donnell. Three words, probably about three most important words he said in his entire campaign, including build the wall. It's just awfully good that someone Mm. with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. Great stuff. You know, last (laughs) night I called Hillary a nasty woman. But this stuff is all relative. After listening to Hillary rattle on and on and on, I don't think so badly of Rosie O'Donnell anymore. Oh my, please pause here for a moment. I remember this whole nasty woman thing because obviously she is a nasty woman and he said she's a nasty woman and the left really loved this because they thought, they thought we were playing by the old rules. So they thought that's just something you can't say. This was a big faux pas. Donald Trump, that fool, that idiot. He doesn't know the rules of politics. We said that and they ran with it. And then all of them started calling themselves nasty woman. Said I'm a nasty woman. All these kind of crazy, blue hair, you know, really angry, ultra feminists. I'm a nasty woman. I'm disgusting. I'm absolutely repulsive. And the effect of that was not the effect they wanted. Because I think the reaction from most normal people was like, well, you know, we weren't going to say it. That's not, that's impolite. So I wasn't going to say it. But Donald Trump is saying the things that previously we were not allowed to say in politics. You think that that's going to kill him. Actually, probably it's going to send him right to the White House. Do you expect Matt Whitaker to be involved in the Russia probe? Do you want him to... It's up to him. Do you want him to rein in Robert Mueller? What a stupid question that is. <laughs> what a stupid question. But I watch you a lot. You ask a lot of stupid questions. Mr. President, since you attack CNN, can I ask you a question? Uh, John Roberts, go ahead, John. Can I ask you a question? No, no. no. John Roberts, go ahead. CNN's fake news. I don't well, take sir, questions. I don't take questions from CNN. Question CNN is CNN. fake news. I don't take questions from CNN. John Roberts of Fox. <laughs> this is so wild to look back at this in retrospect, because don't forget, fake news was an attack that the left launched at the right, specifically at this website, at the Daily Wire. There was this Google doc that went viral and they said, these are fake news accounts and they're part of the reason Trump won. So don't look at fake news. And then the right was able to take fake news and say, wait a second, we're not fake news. We're actually just reporting what's going on. You guys actually are fake news because you run fake stories and you pretend to be objective and you're not. We're actually honest about our point of view. So then you see this this clip of Trump and he's saying, why would I take a question from you at CNN? You are liars. You're propagandists for the left. And you think, yeah, why didn't a lot of presidents do this in the past? Why did we play along with these guys and, and pretend with this fiction that they were objective reporters, even though they were just carrying water for the left, and then let them run roughshod over us? We could have just said, uh, no, you're a liar and a dummy and a propagandist. I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> what? It, it's so simple now. But I think we were so wrapped up in this kind of I don't know, liberal ideology, this liberal regime. We didn't realize how simple it is to just call it like it is. It's great to be here with a thousand wonderful people, or as I call it, a small, intimate dinner with some friends. Or as Hillary calls it, her largest crowd of the season. (laughs) No. Visceral response to attack people on their appearance, short, tall, fat, ugly, 
my goodness, that happened in junior high. Are we not way above that? Would we not all be worried to have someone like that in charge of the nuclear Jake, arsenal? Jake, the, Mr. Trump, I never attacked him on his look. And believe me, there's plenty of subject <laughs> matter right there that I can tell you. This is what I remember. I remember it from the debate because it opened up. It, there, there was actually even more context to it, which is like all, everyone's making their opening statement. And Trump's opening statement was just, Rand Paul has no business being on this stage. He's polling at nothing. Why is he even here? And then to, to use that, he'd say, look, I never attacked you on your looks, but I could. <laughs> you think I, and I actually like Rand Paul, but that's uh, Trump. Uh, Trump doesn't care. He's like the honey badger. I'll tell you what, CNN should be ashamed of itself having you working for them. You are a rude, terrible person. You shouldn't be working for CNN. Go ahead. In, in, go in ahead, Jim, Peter, go in, ahead. In Jim's defense, I've traveled with him and watched him. He's a diligent reporter who busts Well, I'm not a big fan of, of yours either, so I understand. to be honest. So right. He's woefully unprepared uh, to do this job. What say you? I think he's the worst president maybe in the history of our country. I think he's been a disaster. He's been weak. He's been ineffective. Go ahead. President-elect, Go ahead. since you are attacking no, our news not organization, you. Not can you. you give us a chance? Your organization You are attacking terrible. our news organization. Your organization Can you give us a chance Let's to ask a question, sir? Go ahead. Sir, can Quiet. you state... Can, Quiet. Mr. President-elect, Go ahead. can you state categorically... She's asking a question. Don't Mr. be rude. Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? Don't be rude. You're attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you no, give I'm us not a question? Give you a question. I'm you, not going to give you a can question. You can you stay categorical? You are fake news. Sir, go ahead. You, you know, I, I'll pause it there. This is something Trump does that a lot of politicians didn't do before him, but it's, it's a very helpful tactic. I've noticed it even in debates that I've done myself, which is when someone tries to interrupt you, just don't let them. Do, you don't, you actually don't have to. Sometimes speakers or debaters or politicians, they just, for, they wilt, they, they let them do it, but you actually don't have to. You can just you know, obviously in certain moments, it might be to your advantage to let them get out their stupid points so you can smack it down. But otherwise, if it's just being pestered by Jim Acosta, just keep talking and they will wilt. Or you'll just keep talking at the same time and they will look ridiculous. And Trump just knows it because he's, you know, you saw with that Obama question. Uh, Obama criticized you. What do you think? Oh, I think he's the absolute worst person that's ever walked the face of the earth. He goes on for three minutes about it. I know Hillary met my campaign manager. And I got the chance to meet the people who are working so hard to get her elected. There they are. The heads of NBC, <laughs> CNN, CBS, ABC. There's the New York Times right over there and the Washington Post. They're working overtime. True. True. Yeah, she's not laughing so much about that one anymore. That's it. All right. Wow. That was great. I, I actually like that it ends there. I forgot about that whole Al Smith dinner, the, the dinner with him, you know, in the white tie and tails and, and everything. That dinner is a relic from an older age, which is that these politicians would come together. It's usually not on camera. The, the, most of the dinners they do are not broadcast. And they're, they tell these jokes about one another and it, they roast one another and it's very collegial. And that could exist when the center held in the country, when we all basically agreed about the same sorts of things. After the last few decades where the left has aggressed so much, where the left is no longer just protesting this little policy or that policy, but they're protesting the American flag itself, right? Like the Colin Kaepernick protest, where they're, they're really tearing down the country. They're deriding patriotism in a way that, that we really haven't seen before. In that moment, where there's not a liberal consensus really anymore. You can't do that dinner in the way you did in the past. Oh, haha, ha, you made a joke about me. Oh, haha, ha, I made a joke about you. And don't worry, you know, the, the, the liberal candidate's going to win in the end. You, you can't really do it because Trump is actually threatening something about their regime, is threatening something about the news organizations. He's threatening something about, obviously, the election in 20, 2016 and in 2020. And so you see Hillary, she's she kind of playing the fake laugh at the beginning. And then by the end of it, she's not yeah, she's not laughing so much anymore. Not so collegial anymore because actually some real wins are on the table. Can we maximize them in the time we've got left? Sure hope so. And at the very least, we'll get some more laughs. 